Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, 29th November 2018. I'm Investor Boynes with the details. The Sector Skills Development Agency plans to have technical vocational education and training programs in all schools across St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the next few years. Minister of Education St. Clair Jimmy Prince said this would aid in the development of SVG through an increased qualified labor force. Minister Prince was speaking at a symposium today at the Methodist Church Hall hosted by the SSDA. The government is doing this because we recognize that the education revolution cannot be credible, cannot be complete without the provision of alternative pathways for students. This is a, there is at the same time a high level of expressed need for improved educational attainment and skill certification linked to enhanced employment opportunities in a number of sectors, including construction, hospitality, and the tourism subsector in particular. And these are areas identified as growth areas in the economy. The Education Minister said the government has injected some six million EC dollars this year for a TVET improvement project as they saw the need to further invest in skills training programs. He said soon another TVET initiative for students will be realized. The improvement project includes the rehabilitation and retrofitting of the four technical institutes located at Barley, Camden Park, Kingstown, Georgetown. We are even at the moment in the process of procuring some three school buses for the project in order to facilitate the transportation of students. This is in addition to the fact that some schools, of course, are doing TVET. So we're going the extra mile to ensure that this particular project succeeds. Director of the National Qualifications Department, Kenroy Kittels, said that today's symposium for stockholders in TVET will further advance the programs that are currently in place. Having a, a symposium which we hope would help our stakeholders to understand better the linkages between them and the educators, the persons who are overseeing the, the, the TVET system in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And just to say that before 2010, we did not have a clear system in place to regulate uh, technical and vocational education as it is, TVET. And, and sorry, I always left off that training, but training is the, a very important component. For the first time this year, the Ministry of Education offered several scholarships to students who excelled in the TVET programs. Currently, 20 programs are being offered at different levels in 11 areas at various institutions. Meanwhile, Programs and Training Officer at the National Qualifications Department, Nicholas Sparks Brown, said persons with a CARICOM Vocational Qualification Certificate have a greater chance of being hired by many companies today. Brown, who presented on the TVET programs and training at today's symposium, said the demand of the CVQ certificates speak well of the programs, which, is, which are equal to that of a bachelor's degree. So the CVQ is based on competency-based approach to training, assessment, and certification. So it allows the individual to demonstrate competence in the occupational area. And these occupational standards would have been developed and endorsed by the Caribbean Association of National Training Authorities, CANTO. And of course, a lot of these standards you can view now on our website. There are five levels of qualification, namely the entry, supervised, independent, specialized, and managerial programs. However, in SVG, the programs are offered up to level four. Brown said there are many challenges in executing the programs, which they are hoping to address soon. Industry experience for TVET teachers, lack of adequate formal labor market information, and of course, yes, the stigma still exists. There is still a stigma. Um, TVET is about brawn and not brains. It still exists. So I wish to debunk the myth that TVET is for persons with both brains and brawn. What say you? Yeah. All right. Um, other challenges include achieving an equilibrium between demand and supply in the, the workforce 
and the high cost of delivering TVET training programs. And these are not limited to just these, but these are just some of a few challenges that are faced. Agriculture still remains a vital industry to the economy of SVG and students of the Division of Technical Vocational Education are getting the hands-on training to make full use of the opportunities being presented in the field. Lecturer at the Technical College, Enka Peters, said their poultry program gives students a hands-on experience in all aspects of managing a poultry farm and how to add value to their products, which is important in agriculture business seminars where students are taught firsthand how to do business plans. Um, also we have, um, there's a course that is called Food Technology where students get firsthand experience in adding value to whatever they do within their practical um, experience. So for example, we are rearing chickens here. Students will now take the chicken and take it to the lab where they can actually make um, chicken ham. And whether they are in um, plants, we grow scythe, and we are currently, um, you know, we just started actually developing our own green seasoning, herb and spice green seasoning. And um, so far, the feedback has been good, but we haven't really hit it at the supermarkets yet. It's just, you know, in and around Annisville. Peters, who also lectures in agriculture science, said the program also features a business component. She said this enables the students to create and or manage any farm with efficiency in mind. Well, one, they would have first an experience of managing, um, managing a unit because here, we the facilitators, myself and Mrs. Bascom, we're just facilitating the students, but they're the ones who are actually doing the day-to-day -day running of um, this poultry unit. So, leaving here and going into, you know, the working world, whether or not um, they find a job, or let's say they find a job, they can actually be supervisors, you know, being able to, to take that um, role and manage other people and also they're living with skills so whether or not they decide to work with somebody they can actually own their own business. Peter said safety is also important and the students are well trained to keep their surroundings sanitized and the meat safe. Well, um, one of the things that we ensure here is that, um, you know, because we are, we are located in a residential area, we ensure that our area is, is clean. You know, sanitation is very important. And you would notice that our students are dressed in their um, PPPE gears and stuff like that. So we do sanitize our tables, we do sanitize our tools and everything before they are used. Um, it starts, you know, even from slaughtering right down to packaging. So everything is sanitized and go according to standards. Some of the students showed our new seam what they have learned thus far from the slaughter to the packaging process. I hold the neck of the chicken. I look for a sweet spot and they give it one cut. Leave it to drain a while so the body could shut down slowly. Then this is more humane than just chopping the neck off? Yes. If I cut it off completely, the board now gets an instant shock. You hold the chicken at the top, prevent it from slipping through and damaging the rest part of the meat. And we leave it to drain a while to prevent blood from going over into the next process, which is the dipping. Well, basically, we are placing the bars into hot water, which is roughly between 140 to 155 degrees to loosen up the feathers to make it easier for the plucker to um, take off the feathers. So right now, I'll show you. How would it stay in there for? We're staying in roughly about 10 to 15 seconds. So what we do now is when the board is um, in the plucking machine, Turn it on with, with some water to um, help remove the uh, feathers away from the board. Uh, roughly about five to six seconds. Basically, here is where the, um, the um, feathers that are left are manually, manually hand blocked. Um, then it's being passed up there where it's um, being 
where the intestines are being taken out. And then you want to try to cut straight. You don't want to cut slanted because then the board, the board will actually bust open. So I'm going to go in with just three fingers because you don't want the hole to be that wide. In this process, you want to pull out everything and make sure that the gallbladder, it, it, the gallbladder is clear because if the gallbladder bursts, you can make the chicken get bitter. This is the gallbladder. So you try to dismantle it as quick as possible so you know that it won't get contaminated with the meat. And then after this process, I just pass on the intestine to my other fellow student and she will dismantle the heart, the heart, the liver and the gizzard and discard the intestines. So we take out any excess fat insides that um, would not be looking presentable because some people want their boards to be baked so they're baking it whole so we're supposed to make sure that inside is clean and ready for stuffing the process where we are weighing the boards to be packaged and the um, whole boards we are shaking out the waters them so that um, when packaging there will be no more water in as you can look down and look down and see, they also package the birds, make sure everything is secure, um, the labels are on, and take the weights, and then at the last stage, last person on there, making sure that um, all the, the weights are noted down, and then it goes into the coolers at the end. And then shortly we call, start making calls and letting everybody know that birds are ready. In other news, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez has called for a closer relationship between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Republic of Ghana. The Prime Minister, who is on an official five-day visit to that African country, said the circumstances of geography and history of the two nations and the development of Ghana's institutions requires the institutionalism of a mechanism to develop the economic, trade and cultural and political ties and cooperation between the Republic of Ghana and SVG. A release from the Agency for Public Information said PM Gonzalez made this call when he visited the Ghana visited Ghana's president at his office. According to the API, Prime Minister Gonzalez also requested an exchange of programs in education between SVG and the Republic of Ghana. The API news release said the president of the Republic of Ghana welcomed the idea of cooperation, noting that Ghana would not relent in its efforts to ensure cooperation in the areas of health, education, socio-political and economic development for the benefit of both countries and their people. And today, the St. Vincent Geothermal Company signed a contract with an Icelandic drilling company for the drilling of four wells in the country. A release issued on the signing said the wells are intended to supply steam for the geothermal power plant being constructed by the St. Vincent Geothermal Company Limited. The geothermal project seeks to transform SVG's energy sector, reducing its dependency on imported diesel and providing a new sustainable and affordable source of energy based on an indigenous resource. The release said the commissioning of the plant is expected to begin in approximately two years. The Bishop's College Kingston took home the title of champions in this year's Secondary Schools Drama Festival, which concluded yesterday at the Peace Memorial Hall. Seven schools took part in this year's competition. The Bishop's College Kingston also secured the Best Makeup, Best Stage Management, Best Supporting Actress and Lead Actress categories in the competition. The Intermediate High School, which took the second place, captured Best Costume and Set Design, with actors from the school securing Best Actress and Best Lead, lead Male. The competition chief adjudicator, Dwayne Daniel, said he was pleased that the plays were all original. He said this bodes well for the future of drama in SVG. Now, this year we were treated to seven plays staged by Trumaca, Ontario Secondary School, Bishop's College, Kingstown, Adelphi Secondary School, St. Clair Dakin Secondary School, Intermediate High School, Petty Bordell Secondary School, and Dr. J.P. Eustace Memorial Secondary School. They were all original plays. I am always encouraged when I see the staging of original plays. This gives the opportunity for the full development of all aspects of theater.
from writing to directing to acting, stage management, set design. This allows and brings an exciting and fresh perspective to the audience. These are always good things. And I trust that in the fullness of time, more writing and directing workshops will be convened so that the budding writers and directors could take advantage of those and the quality that we will see on the stage would be even greater improved. Daniel said the festival is an important one and challenged all schools to use it to showcase the talent of their students. Challenge the powers that be and all schools especially those with a theater arts program, to make use of the school's festival to showcase their talents. The benefits of theater should never be underestimated. It hones organizational skills. It is a discipline. It stimulates the creative faculties, as well as gives the participant the courage to face a live audience. All of these things stand the student in good stead. To all the participants, front stage, backstage, the directors, the writers, teachers, sponsors, and all who played a part, however great or small, in bringing the festival to fruition, congratulations. A special thanks to the Ministry of Culture and to Mr. Thibbles and in particular, the tireless efforts of Mr. Martin Quashi, ably assisted by Ms. Millington for bringing it all together. Cultural Officer Anthony Tibbles thanked the teachers and parents who supported the festival. And I enjoyed a lot of the work that was presented. I do not envy the judges and the work that they had to do to adjudicate the festival. So I want to use this opportunity to extend my thanks. Mr. Martin, thank you very much. Mr. Marx, thank you very much. Mr. Daniel, Chief Judge, thank you very, very much. Please, a round of applause. I also want to take this opportunity to extend thanks to the students who participated and to the teachers who worked with them and most especially, I want to thank the parents because teachers and students don't do this alone. Parents have to give space for children to be out a little bit later so that this thing works. And all the work that the students have put in, thank you very, very much. We now bring to you highlights of the performances of the Bishops College and the Intermediate High School at yesterday's finals.
work has to be done locally to address domestic violence. So says human rights activist and director of the Marion House, Jeannie Oliver, in an interview with SVG TV News today. Oliver suggested that awareness and educational programs be held throughout the year to galvanize action to end domestic violence in the country. We need to run programs for women and for men, not only for youths. So the youths who come to Marion House for the youth assistance program, yes, they're between 15 and 25, but there are women, there are youths who are older than that and would like to get into the program, but you have a cutoff point. So I would love to see us run up programs, ongoing programs, not ad hoc, not for two months, not for three months, a full-time one-year program, which will assist the, the women or the men in addressing issues, life skills. Please excuse me, thank you. How to communicate? What are some of the dynamics that operate within groups? Oliver said the proposed programs should incorporate technical skills which can be facilitated by agencies. This she, sh this, she said, should empower women to be gainfully employed, which will help break the chain of domestic violence. And at the end of that life skills section, then we go, they go to the, the technical institute where they learn a skill based on the market demand, not just any skill. It has to be market driven. And at the end of that, like what we do within our youth assistance program, they go out on attachment, hands on, where they practice the theory that they would have learned at the Technical Institute with a possibility of employment by the member of the corporate sector to whom they will be attached. Oliver is reminding women and men to take advantage of the counseling services offered at Marion House and she also used the opportunity to offer advice to men and women facing domestic violence. I wish to say to the women of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, all is not lost. We have energies, let us be determined, let us be activists within our individual communities and let us together address the issue of violence against women. It is not my business only, it's your business, a man's business and everybody's business because all of us are Vincentians and all of us live here and I want to live in peace and unity. From 25th November, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women to December 10th, Human Rights Day, the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence campaign is a time to gain support to end violence against women and girls around the world. The international campaign originated from the first Women's Global Leadership Institute, coordinated by the Center for Women's Global Leadership in 1991. This Saturday, the National Council of Women will host a fitness walk in the communities of Edinburgh and Otley Hall in commemoration of International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and the 16 Days Activism and World AIDS Day. The walk is expected to commence at 4.30 p.m. outside the Kingston Cemetery.